strand flows through you as it flows through everything. Now is the time to lean into using strand, not back away from it. Show me something. Show me something. Okay, the damage might be good. Where the current takes you. What? Okay, we we have a lot to talk about. We we have a lot to talk about. Listen, guys. I was a little skeptical. I know there's a lot of things that we just saw from there. I was a little skeptical. I think Strand is going to be just as powerful in PvE. I think Strand is going to primarily... I mean, it's going to be good in PvP. A lot of people are really getting hung up on Strand and PvP. Right? Because of the grappling, correct? But I think this is about to be extremely meta in PvE. Oh, we have an article? Oh my god. Bungie broke down in it. They they did the blog post today. All right. Inside Strand. Guardians, prepare to unlock the mysteries of Strand. In Destiny 2 Life, all players will gain access to a brand new elemental power to add to the current lineup of Void. I'm actually going to move myself down. Hold on one second. A new element of power will be added to the current lineup of Void, Arc, Solar, and Stasis. Like its predecessor, Strand will offer players exciting new abilities and powers that dominate the battlefield, along with new wrinkles that promise to change the way Guardians think about traversal in combat. With Strand, Guardians will be wielding the fabric of the universe in ways that would be a formidable threat to anyone who stands in their way. The Strand trailer for Life Vault shows all three Guardian classes using Strand to deadly effect and provides an action-packed overview of what to expect. All right, here we're taking a deeper look into what players can expect from Strand, including a class-by-class -class breakdown of each Guardian class. We'll be plucking at the strings of the universe to play sweet, destructive music. So threads make the Guardian. From the neon-drenched streets of Neptune's secret city of Neomuna to Guardians soaring through the sky by grappling to an enemy spaceship, it's been clear from the start that Lightfall is different. Yes, things are coming to a head in the penultimate chapter of the Light and Darkness saga. But Lightfall's influences and inspirations prove that there has been plenty of room for the team to let loose, to revel in their creativity and craft, and to have some fun. One of the touchstones the team drew from was the bombast and flair of the 1980s action cinema. Dude, look at this shot. Look at that, dude. <laughs> Think of an era of film where no explosion was too big and no active set piece was too over the top. The aesthetic informed much of Lightfall's tone, and it certainly had a big influence on Strand itself. Even before it was formerly known as Strand, the team had many concepts for the Damage Type 5, as it was really originally called in development before align aligning on the feature set and lore that brought it to life. We had a couple of front runner concepts for a while, said designer Kevin Yane, Giannis. Sorry, Kevin. Part of my desire was to have something more astral in the game. Strand also aligned really well to the fantasy of the product, the 80s action hero. As Giannis put it, there wasn't a single aha moment where all the threads of Strand fell neatly into place. Instead, it was the result of continuous dialogue with the team about what would make for exciting gameplay, what would make sense from a narrative standpoint, and how they can make those ideas manifest in the game. Through these discussions, Damage Type 5 slowly morphed into something a bit more specific then called Darkness Telekinesis, which evolved further, eventually manifesting into what you see today. We have a lot of conversations around where the strand concept known as weaves come from and trying to reinforce the physical language for how it manifests and how it looks to make it feel like it was from the same darkness family as Stasis, Yana said. The more the team talked, the more the concepts and evocative language 
that describes Scram with terms and descriptions like Wii's, Tangles, and Universal Strings of Consciousness came to be. It's everyone building on everyone's idea, said designer Eric Smith. How we choose to implement the, these things affects how we talk about it and vice versa, like weaving objects instead of spawning objects or summoning objects. It becomes part of the aesthetic. So deadly definitions. To understand strand, let's start with some vocabulary. Granting an object using strand is weaving. Defeating enemy affected by strand will unravel them, disconnecting their life force from weave and creating a tangle. Ah, left behind after a strand debuffed enemy is defeated. A tangle is a swirling bundle of strand fibers. These bundles of strand explode when shot, causing area damage to nearby enemies. Guardians can also pick up tangles and throw them to deadly effects. So similar, similar to like what you can do with the uh, the, spe the stasis. Uh, my, I, I don't know, spear. Why am I having a hard time? This is not the Titan class. I literally have a build for it. On the debuff side, there are three new terms to know. Suspend, unravel, sever. Okay. All right. Look at that. All right. So, so we're starting to get some of the verbs here. Suspend. A suspended PV enemy is lifted off the ground for a brief duration and is essentially disabled. In PVP, suspended players are lifted off the ground but can still move, albeit slow, and fire the weapons to fight back. All right. So, it doesn't take you out of the fight completely inside of pvp but you are going to be slower but you can at least fire your weapons back it's not as bad as stasis but let's continue unravel attacking an unraveled enemy will cause threats to burst out of the target and attack other nearby targets once hit that target will also become unraveled all right so that's interesting it's like another it's like scorch applying scorch but yes it, it, it reminds me of Scorch, but it seems more sinnant. And then Sever. A severed enemy is less capable of affecting the material world, reducing their damage output as a result. Hmm. So it's just... It's just an all-around debuff. Okay. All right. Uh, the major buff coming with Strand is Woven Mail. With his ability, the Guardians is sheathed in a protective mesh of Strand Matter, reducing incoming damage. Note that in PvP, Woven Mail will only reduce damage taken on the body. Head damage and melee damage will continue as normal. So we have the new exotic from last week. The Cytorachne. I still can't say it. Cytorachne. 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 All right. It's Cytorachne. Okay. All right, so it's perk. Grapple gives woven mail. All right, so just simply grappling will give you woven mail. But with that being said, um, woven mail is going to be a part of our subclass. It's going to be part of the subclass of strength. Um, now, what's so interesting here is it reduces incoming damage, but it also reduces incoming damage inside of PvP. This is really going to emphasize, depending on how much it is, it's really going to emphasize us going for crits. So, I mean, if you can imagine grappling, you have a shotgun in hand. You grapple, you pull out, you got a shotgun in hand, all right? And the guy that's sitting there trying to gun you down is just landing body shots. You're going to be more effective at closing that gap because you're going to be taking reduced damage with specifically that hunter exotic. And then whatever other ways to actually proc woven mail. You know what I mean? Now, I know Les is saying land your headshots, easy. But, you know, again, when someone's rushing you, right? That's, that's, it's more difficult to do. And keep in mind, we just got a shotgun buff, right? And, and they're, they're more consistent than ever uh, with the reticle changes and the pellet spreads. So, yes, I, I feel like this is Bungie's way of introducing more aggressive play. But then you can also use it you're going to be able to use it more passively. You know what I mean? Proc, woven mail, and essentially just tank more shots and just strafe more. You know? So, we'll see. Now, great suggestion. Someone said, can gut shot, could that counter woven mail? Maybe. Maybe. Although gut shot, again, gut shot itself is not a good perk in my opinion. It's only until you get enhanced gut shot. Take Amit, for instance. Um, that's whenever I feel like you can use gut shots. So, gut shot, base gut shot is trash. Enhanced gut shot, actually, actually good, guys. All right.
Whip, whip. One of the most exciting new abilities in Guardian Strand Toolkit is the grapple. With this ability, players can press the grenade button and the Guardian will weave a hook from Strand Matter, which they can grab onto it in anchor point. The grappling hook would then begin contracting, pulling the Guardians along. Strand's grapple can create its own grapple points out of thin air. So you can always propel yourself through the sky, even if there's not a solid surface to latch onto. Strand's grapple can create its own grapple points out of thin air. I, we figured this was going to be the case. I don't know. I I guess some of you guys thought that that was going to be the case, but I just wanted to make sure there wasn't have like there ne didn't need to be points already in place. You know what I mean? Uh, Guardians will also be able to execute melee strikes during or at the end of a grapple, known as a grapple melee, which will deal bonus damage, unravel an enemy, and then push them backwards. Remember what I just said? Bungie is a lot. This is essentially going to a, let me let me go ahead and move my camera down because I feel like I'm blocking things even worse up here. I just talked about we're going to be able to play more aggressively. OK. Not only are you going to be able to proc woven mail with that hunter exotic or w with other means in our subclass, but you're going to come out of it. Your melee is going to do more damage. Uh, you're going to unravel an enemy. So you're essentially you're gonna you're gonna act what's the unravel you're gonna then let's see right here unravel and attack and unravel enemy will cause threads to burst out of a target and attack other nearby targets once hence the target will become unraveled there you go there you go you're gonna apply unravel so you get the kill then you're gonna send out the threads all right <clears throat> and then push them backwards i don't know how far but it may be something similar to like um you know we have some other exotics that that push this i think void 3.0 warlock melee that pushes enemies backwards i mean that's that's really good now i don't really know exactly how it's going to synergize with other things like what about synthoseps on a titan you know what about the doom what about doom marchers uh i don't think you're going to be able to come out and shoulder charge that would be too much um unravel is jolt plus scorch okay now, when we were developing the concept around ropes and strings, we felt it was the perfect opportunity to add grapple into the game, says Smith. You never want to shoehorn something in for the sake of interaction that isn't natural. It has to be the right time, the right situation. The stars align for something like that here. Giannis said Strand really came to life for him when the team started seeing the power of the grapple when combined with other elements of Strand. When we got things like Tangles Online, we started realizing that the gameplay here is incredibly novel, interesting and knew when you have to do all these quick context switches between grappling and slamming and throwing a tangle. All these things can happen in quick succession, and that rewards the player for having high APM actions per minute, which is not really a thing we have had in the game at all before. All right, so trying to add some skill into this. It isn't just press one button. You saw them coming out of the grapple. You've got the, you know, the, almost like the, the shadow dive, but the, the strand version of shadow dive, right? Uh, but there's obviously a combat loop here, a gameplay loop here. Now, Smith picks up that thought and runs with it. I defeat an enemy with my melee ability. They unwind into a tangle. I grapple onto the tangle, which refunds my grapple, and snatch the tangle out of midair. I then hurl the tangle at a group of enemies in the distance, grappling onto the tangle again while it flies, pulls me through the air behind it. As the tangle nears a group of enemies, I slam downward out of my grapple to suspend a lone enemy who split off from the group while the tangle slams to the rest of the group and then explodes. There's a lot of these really cool dynamic interactions built into Strand, and that makes it feel unique. Dude, that sounds nuts. You're going to be able to actually launch yourself. So that time, that trailer part where we show, where it shows like our Yeet Titan and then the Hunter like grappling behind you're going to be able to do this for yourself you're going to be able to take a tangle throw it while it's throwing you you lasso that bitch all right it yoinks you across the map you, you slam down you do all kinds of crazy stuff like suspending the enemy all right the tangle does a hell of a lot of damage and explodes we're spider-man <laughs> From the start, these new mobility options will change the way you play, but it doesn't end there. Each Guardian class will interact with and will strand in a unique way. With the new abilities and powerful perks to explore and customize, here's how it breaks down. All right, so we're getting into the subclass itself. Spider-Man wishes he was us. Actually, all right, Warlock Brood Weavers. 
The Warlock is our Scran Minion Master, said Smith, when explaining how Destiny 2's Master of All Things Space Magical will utilize Strand. To understand how Warlocks will bend Strand to the will, you have to first understand Red Links. Dude, look at that image. Why not? All right. Threadlings are explosive minions wo woven from strand matter, he said. The warlock broodweaver, being the cerebral type, is more in tune with the threadlings than the other classes. All threadlings will run forward, will jump on enemies, and then explode. But only the warlock threadlings will return to the warlock and travel with them if they can't find a target. Holy hell. The threadlings will return to the warlock and then travel with them if they can't. What the hell? So this this is this isn't like a a release and they're done. They literally come back. You literally have minions, warlocks. You have minions. It's like wait, like a scream will go and then explode. These guys literally come back. Let's say I have three threadlings and I only need two of them to defeat an enemy. If I'm a warlock, that last one is going to run back, hop onto me, and condense down into a form that is orbiting me, which is known as perching then the next time i attack an enemy it will pop off and attack that same enemy which really gives it this sense of having these minions that are doing my bidding they love me and they want to come back and hang out with me what the hell <sighs> somebody call bombad somebody call bombad right now and tell them what warlocks are about to be but it's not just in summoning and wielding threadlings that warlocks excel with their strand melee attack warlocks cast arcane needle a deadly projectile which tracks targets causing high damage and unraveling them upon impact. Warlocks will be able to quickly chain three arcane needle attacks in a row. Holy crap. Three of them. Warlocks have two strand aspects to utilize, and it's here where Threadlings once again interplay. So we have Weaver's Call on Riftcast. The Warlock weaves three Threadling eggs, which hatch into Threadlings when they hit a surface. Any perch Threadlings are converted to additional eggs what so when you cast your rift you cast so you got three eggs they hit a surface and then if they reperch they're converted to additional eggs okay is that but it's still a one-to-one -one, right you're not getting more than one back it's not like you can have three threadlings it comes back repurchase and now one repurchase and it converts to two eggs right I think it's still a one-to-one. -one. So, okay. All right. Now, mind spun invo invocation, invocation, invocation. This aspect improves several of the warlock's abilities. Uh, grapple. When you execute a grapple melee, the warlock weaves three threatening eggs from the target. All right. You guys are just going to be running around with just little sentient. You just have to grapple. So if you, you grapple. Oh, okay. You grapple, you melee an enemy, and you immediately spawn thread three of them? Threatening grenade. You can consume your threatening grenade to generate a full complement of perch threadlings. Okay, and then shackle grenade. You can consume your shackle grenade to gain a buff, creating a suspending detonation on every kill. Alright, we have to just see like what that detonation looks like. Now the warlock telekinetic abilities culminate with their super needle storm a deadly combination of burst damage and area denial on cast the warlock conjures strand matter into a what is that fuselage a series of shots fired or missiles thrown all at the same time ha <laughs> ha okay warlock conjures strand matter into a fuselage of hardened spikes launching them forward with a wave of their hand the missiles will stick into enemies and the environment alike before detonating and reweaving themselves into an army of threadlings that will hunt down any survivors. All right. All right, man. Use a lot. Don't, don't mess around. Okay, what do y'all think of Warlocks? Hunter Thread thread Runner. While every Strand Guardian class will have access to the grapple and the array of mobility options it brings, the Hunter takes movement and speed to an entirely new level. From attacking multiple enemies at once while in midair to using a new rogue dart weapon that benefits from maximum agility, it's no wonder that playing the Thread Runner has been compared to the thrill of watching a superhero come to life. This is how you know most people on the sandbox team are hunters or warlocks. All right. I would say 30% are warlocks and 
65% of them are, are uh, hunters. And you're going to see why in just a moment. All right. Uh, the Thread Runner's melee attack. Threaded Spike has the hunter hurling out a rope dart that bounces between enemies, damaging and severing them before run, returning to the hunter. Upon its return, it grants melee energy for each enemy hit. Hunters can catch the rope dart by pressing the melee input button at the right time. All right, so you actually have to get your timing down right. It's, it's not free. Perfecting that timing will earn the player an additional amount of melee energy. Now, two strand aspects will be available for hunters. Ensnaring Slam. While in the air, press the air move input to slam downward, suspending all nearby enemies. So think of Shatter Dive, but instead of applying slow, you're actually going to suspend those enemies. And the radius looks large, guys. It looks large. Oh my god, Anonymous Gifted with the 50 get this subs. Thank you so much. <coughs> now, Widow Silk. This aspect grants an additional grenade charge. The Hunter Grapple ability creates a persistent grapple tangle when it latches, which fully refunds grenade energy when grappled too. Hunters can use this ability to set up chains of grapple points that their, their entire team can use, greatly enhancing their ability to quickly move around in combat and or traverse the environment. So <clears throat> we've seen how beneficial it is to grapple, guys. So the fact that the hunter's grapple ability creates a persistent grapple tangle when it latches. And you we just read the gameplay loop here. And this can be shared with your teammates. What this means is just, I think every, every team is going to have to have a hunter. Um, but even like a 3v3 team, like a trials team, you may want to have a hunter on your team. So, so it's kind of more of a support role, right? Now the lethal combinations of grapple and rope dart converge with the thread runner super silk strike. When activated, the hunter uses their grapple to freely move through the world in third-person view, also throwing the rope dart to strike down enemies. Hunters will be able to use grapple more often during the super, during the super, and the rope dart features both a light and heavy attack. The light attack is meant for single opponents and can be used in the air and on the ground. When on the ground, the hunter can chain attacks seamlessly, hitting an enemy with the tip of the darts, deals bonus damage, and defeating an enemy with it causes the enemy to explode. Now, the heavy attack has the hunter swing the rope dart around in a 360 degree arc damaging all nearby enemies as with the light attack this can be used on the ground or in the air so we saw it i mean he's when he's essentially like throwing the the rope dart that's the light attack but whenever you know lassoing that thing and you know that's the heavy attack yeah when he's doing the helicopter <laughs> let's see titans titan berserker the hulking mass of guardians Guardian stands before a squad of enemies, ignoring their paltry taunts. Without warning, a gi gigantic blade made of tightly woven strand matter surrounds her hand as she leaps into the fray. Powerful blades rolling in fury. The Titan's powerful woven gauntlets slice through scores of her foes, and the enemies of humanity tremble. Sounds good. I don't know. We'll, yeah. It just sounds like more punching, right? Now, from the start, the fantasy of the strand-wielding Titan Berserker was wild, untamed power. As the subclass name suggests, the Titan uses strands in ways that ensure maximum carnage within, within your face attacks that can sever enemies en masse before they are permanently deleted. So, notice that sever is being here, used here. Now, the Titan strand melee ability is Frenzy Blade. With the press of a melee button, the Titan dashes forward and slashes his enemy with their strand arm blade. So, both, okay? severing victims and decreasing their damage output with a default set of three charges titans can chain these slashes together for maximum offensive power so it's going to be used as almost like a mobility way you know a mobility buff uh it's severed so it's going to you're going to apply the debuff and you get three so similar to what we saw there with the warlock the titans will also be able to utilize a pair of aspects into the fray destroying a tangle weaves woven mail onto the titan and nearby allies in addition to reducing damage taken, this aspect also increases the Titan's melee energy regeneration while wearing woven mail. So you actually destroying a tangle. We we just talked about the gameplay loop there. The hunters can supply the tangle. You can literally throw it, destroy it, in the process, come out of 
come out of the grapple after and then throw it and then follow up with a melee that's doing more damage and refunding yourself more melee more melee energy in the process now drinkers last when the titan casts her class ability the titan will blast forward a powerful ripple in reality suspending enemies that are caught in the shock waves path all right so another suspension level melee interesting i don't know we have to see how fast that that rip like how fast that that movement actually is now the titan berserker super blade fury sees the titan dual wielding fist blades and roaming the battlefield with ill intent the super light attack is a supercharged version of the frenzy blade melee attack and each light attack that connects increases the next attack speed which tops out after a maximum of three hits in addition connecting with light attacks also builds energy for the super heavy attack with each hit with the heavy attack the titan hurls a pair of projectiles forward that seeks out enemies suspending and damaging them on impact you know what this sounds like guys this sounds like sun charge next we have sun charge where hitting r1 launches you forward see so, yeah you see how he's launching forward with anything you're just gonna annihilate that it just sounds like sun charge to me guys is is what what that sounds like like shoulder charge in in a way without having to build up like you don't have to sprint you just literally just mash your button over and over um but i almost feel like the animation is going to be similar elsewhere strand will see three new grenades including grapple which is controlled with the grenade button the threatening grenade splits into three projectiles that weave into threadlings upon impact the shot grenade effectively acts as a bola, detonating and suspending blasts and sending out small second name bolas to suspend nearby enemies. All right. Finally, it wouldn't be a new elemental power in Destiny 2 without new fragments to explore and customize your strand wielding guardian. Here's a look at a few of the new fragments. I was saying that. Ebola? No, no, it's Ebola. Ebola. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Ebola! Ebola! We saw gameplay of this. I still don't know if I'm saying it right. Okay. Now, new fragments. Threat of Ascent. Activating your grenade ability reloads your equipped weapons and grants increased weapon handling and airborne effectiveness for a short time. Okay. Threat of Fury. Damaging targets with the Tangle grants melee energy. Synergize. That would be that would be really, really good there with the Titan. Threat of Finality. Finishers generate thread links. Interesting. And Threat of Warning. Picking up an aura power grants woven mail. Lots of synergy here, guys. Lots of synergy. From any sinking threatening minions to bombastic supers to game-changing new mo mobility options, Strand is bringing a host of unique abilities to every Guardian's arsenal. Prepare to conjure and weave for yourself in this into Lightfall when it launches on February the 28th. Guys, what do you think? That's the breakdown of your your Strand subclasses. I think this the the team synergy here is what sounds the nastiest to me all right trailer broke that br 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 breakdown one let's do the trailer breakdown okay guys um osiris <clears throat> is teaching us strand here dude osiris got a ghost back <clears throat> or is that ours is that our hold on, hold on hold on oh it's our son of a bitch you got maybe he doesn't even need a ghost it's ours it's our ghost yeah, it's ours. All right. All right. Okay, at six seconds, Strand Grenade splits off into three mini trackers like skip grenades, but explodes. All right, so let me slow this down. Okay. All right, so kind of like skip grenades here. Look at that. It even has like the same bounce effect. Okay, but... Unlike skip grenades, this thing explodes. Now, you can have like a jolt, right? They have the threatening grenade. So it's almost like a combination of skip grenades and scatter grenades in one. All right, at 21 seconds, Warlock actually consumes his grenade. So let's click here to 20 seconds. Here he comes. He's doing it. Back away from it. Okay. All right. So he consumes his grenade and the next kill sends out a wave that suspends nearby enemies. All right, so converting here, converting here. So there's a couple things happening. Um, th there's a lot happening. You guys are hitting me with a lot right now. Hold on, hold on. First up, this looks like the Lincoln Green scope right here. 
Les is saying it's a two round burst legendary pulse rifle, which I know revision zero is a two round burst pulse, but Bungie may be adding another archetype. Listen to it. All right, let me, it's hard to listen to it on this. So not back away from it. It is a two round burst. It is a two round burst. It does sound, it sounds like a two round burst. It sounds, it sounds like two. The other side of things, guys, he's ap applying a uh, strand to his weapon by consuming his grenade, right? Uh, and at 23 seconds, our warlock throws three dart melee. So again, similar to the Titan, you can throw three melees. One, two, three. All right. It's hard to see if there's tracking. One, two. Okay. All right, all right. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's a cool animation. It's a cool animation. At 29 seconds, Warlock Barrage with Strand Missiles. All right, let's pull up 29 seconds here. We see the Warlock Super going into effect. Brew Weaver. All right, sends out the Barrage. It's like Blade Barrage. But then afterwards, look at these guys. Afterwards, you have all these little guys show up. Um, uh, these little, these, these thread links. Look how many are actually spawned. Look how many actually spawned from this. It's like an army. Now, can you have them come back? Can you have three of them come back to you and perch? It's, it's, it's Blade Barrage plus... Like two magazines of colony. Yeah, so I think they can come back and even and perch right back up. This is literally a necromancy warlock. It's it's yeah, I see where you where you yeah. They're so cute. I don't they're kinda of creepy to me, man. 30 seconds sec 37 seconds. Titan barricade normally shoots out a wave of strand that suspends targets. Uh let's see. 37. Alright, so our Titan does his his barricade. Okay, so this is the single one. So this is what the single... This will be the normal bear cave wave of strand. And then if we have the Titan exotic, that will do three. All right? So with the exotic goes with the three. We we assumed that we were going to be able to do this anyways with our bear cave, but it will be one wave. And then with the Titan exotic, it'll be three. Uh, some questions that come up. How would this synergize with Capri's? I I don't know. I really don't. I don't know. Is that Menagerie? Oh, it's Calisus. It, yeah, it's Calisus Pyramid Ship. Look at the look at the architecture on the side, guys. Look on the sides. That's that's pyramid all over. Um. All right. At 39 seconds, we did see the Titan Berserker Super Blade Fury, and you actually get a good look at its lunge range. So pay attention here, guys. It does that and then he comes out of the launch all right lots of oh my god and then does this okay okay what you see right there is the melee this is not the super all right uh 39 uh, at the leading up to this this 36 second okay so he casts the barricade suspends the enemies then does the three the three melees Boom, boom, boom. Cast the super. Yeah! All right, it is a cool looking animation. All right, all right. Then, and then proceeds to do the heavy attack, which wrecks that guy. But it's hard to say, like, how much damage it actually is doing, right? At 48 seconds, we see the hunter diving from a very high point. Saw this from, like, the Game Awards trailer, and it suspends all targets when he hits the ground. The ensnaring slam. You look, you, you, you graceful bastards. Look at that. I can't stand y'all. Look okay, at this stuff right here makes me want to be a hunter. You know that? Like I'll never be a hunter in my life. But this stuff right here. God, that's, that's hot. That is hot. Look at that. Look at it. Oh, my God. So, again, like they mentioned a second ago, you can catch it. Throws it. And if you press the button at the right time. All right. At 54 seconds. 
we see the hunter grapplings there and then appear to either activate his super or cancel the grapple animation. This could be the start of ensnaring slam. So, all right, let's see 54 seconds. He grapples. Hold on, hold on. I want to point out something. Y'all see this weapon? The hell? It's a hand cannon, but look at that tip. It's so girthy. What is that? Look. Look at that thing. Why is it so thick? I haven't even seen that weapon. This is the first time I... Have we seen this already? I think it's a shotgun cross. No, he has a shotgun. Ho hold on. He has a shotgun on. There's his shotgun. That's his shotgun. Grapples. That's a hand cannon, guys. Let's just saying the gun seems kinetic. Yeah, because the, the shotgun shot void, right? Yeah. I don't think we have... Uh, Bungie would be... Every time we ever got a new weapon type, Bungie's like... New weapon type. New weapon type. Look look at the glaive. Look at the glaive. Look at the glaive. Deep throat the glaive. Like, it is just constant, like... They parade the new weapon types constantly. This just looks like... Some sort of hand cannon. Just with a very thick tip. Alright, hold on. This is the super. Alright, so we have the... The dodging. The light attack. Another light attack that explodes. Okay, so again, the first attack applies it. All right, all right. Whoa, 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 whoa. And then it does the explosion. I'm trying to remember. Hold on, hold on. The rope dart features the light and heavy attack. The light attack is meant for single opponents. can be used in air and on the ground. And when on the ground, the hunter can chain attack seamlessly, hitting an enemy with the tip of the dart deals bonus damage. And then defeating an enemy with it causes the enemy to explode. Okay, so it has, it has detonate or explosions. <laughs> All right, no, the heavy is the 360 attack, guys. At 58, so, but, but the main takeaway from that, all of this right here, is that, Hunters, you have a means to dodge when using this super. So you're not just gonna be just trolling a rope in stationary. You can, you can move with that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I, I'm, I'm sure you get some sort of buff with it as well. Um, at 1 minute 6 seconds, Osiris appears on the screen. Turning to watch what appears to be the Cabal dropships invading near Muna. That's a lot of Cabal balls. I'm assuming they are enemy Cabal dropships, right? At, a 12, at 1 minute and 12 seconds... The camera circles around all three guardian subclass interacting with a large pillar of strand. So. Ah, maybe this is us like in our discovering of strand right here. Okay. Hold on. Some, some takeaways here. Hold on. I want us to back up real quick. Be looking at weapons on the guardian. I don't, I can't see anything actually. Doesn't seem to show anything. Wow. Good job, Bungie. There's something on the back of the hunter. All right, all right. There's the bolus. Bolus, everybody. Bolus. Um, I never knew what that what that was. So, at a minute and 16, close cut of woman male titan for a moment before he throws the shackle grenade, which effectively acts as a bola. It's a type of weapon from South America made, made of strand. Okay, so when it hits, look at this. So, it's, it's like a... It's, it's even more... Destructive than a normal bola. I mean, for obvious reasons, it's, it's sci-fi. But I'm, I'm talking like most bolas just have three, right? Right? Can you just imagine for a second, just IRL, you know, hundreds of years ago, and one of these things fucking get your get your legs. You know what I mean? You're running, you're running through the jungle, and then and then one of these things clips you and you just just tangles your ass up. No good things followed after that. You know what I mean? Oh, real bolas have two. Oh, okay. All right. So that's what a real bola is. It's got it's got two, two, two. Okay. All right. Um. I notice it hits. It hits. It splits. It suspends. I don't really know why our guardian had to shoot a rocket. I, I guess it just suspends. All right. So he throws it. It hits. It's three of them. 
Am I looking at that right? Look like three right there, right? Minute and 20 seconds. Warlocks cast a rift with Weaver's Cow, making a we wave of three Threadling eggs, which hatch into Threadlings when they hit the surface and begin tracking enemies. Okay, so this is us seeing Warlocks, you guys, in actions. Oh my god. Look at all of that! One, two, three, four, five, six. From just a rift gas? That's way more. So obviously something's getting amped up. Some of these, some of these are getting, yeah, it's getting amped up. Oh, he had three. So he had three on him from the, okay, hold on. I don't know. I'm, I'm. Someone's saying he already had three on him, and it may be an exotic. Could be. All right. So, all right. Look at this. Look at this. At a minute and twenty-two seconds, uh, the Titan tosses up a ball of strand in the air, which the Hunter then grapples onto. We saw this. They literally Bungie just went through this gameplay loop, traveling through this grapple as the ball moves forward. The movement tech. Look at it right here. Boom. And then you can use that as damage. Boom. And then you come out, your melee is going to do more damage after this grapple. So, you literally throw this at an enemy, grapple to it, it still hits enemy, explodes, you still have momentum, have the extended melee plus melee damage coming out of it. And then, of course, the, the ball explosion will be to use this everywhere. Yeah, trials is going to be crazy. <laughs> at a minute 24, the hunter throws a Kuna knife, which we see tracking through four goblins and a minotaur. Boom, 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 boom. And I think he's going to catch it again. He got it again. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Again, you can catch. You can catch the knives back, guys. You can catch it back. Um. All right. That's our trailer breakdown, guys. And we also did the Inside Strand article. We'll have a cut up of that here soon, okay? Slap that like button like your mama told you right.